Morning everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Looking at the fencing, I can see it from here. The wind is bad. So the wind isn't so bad here. I want to get my upper strand done today. And the lower strand by the ground all the way around. I've got it here, but I don't have it through the forest that way. Well, it's up to that tree, I think is where I ended right there. And I've got to get the high strand up. And then I'm going to put, I want to put a rope or something around at eight feet so the deer clearly see that. I don't want them trying to jump and hit a fence wire. And, oh, I have to show you something. Um, I have something that's going to make this really, really good and uh, improve my system a lot. So very soon we're going to be able to sleep in peace at night for the first time in seven years because there is a system where, see right now there's energy pulsing through this wire with the system I've got now once every three seconds. What I'm going to show you, what I got uh, to replace it is once every second, which is much, much better. Because once every three seconds, I mean, an animal's going to have to sit there. I don't even think I'll feel a pulse. Here's the problem. My shoes are enough to ground me right now. And that is why someone was able to completely undo this. Now, an animal is not um, insulated. I mean, not ground me. The shoes insulate me from the ground. I don't feel anything. I can go like this, sometimes. Yeah, depends on the, the weather conditions. But, yeah, it's not. This is a weak controller. I got a more powerful controller. I'll show you that in a minute. Anyway, the point is, an animal can feel it. It is effective. It works for animals, but it's just the modern ones are so weak. And um, this is this is the problem. This doesn't slow it down any two-legged predators or creatures at all if they got shoes on now if I took my shoes off I'll get a zap it hurts if you take your shoes off believe me I've been zapped by this one but there's pulses coming through this wire um, at a certain rate and it's very very simple to have an alarm that measures those pulses and if there's a missing pulse the alarm goes off so if somebody goes snip, we know it. And uh, that is going to give us peace at night. Because once this is up to the top and down to the bottom, when I'm done putting this all, closing this in, there's no way anything could get through it. And we won't know. There's no way that anything or anyone could get around that ever again without us knowing. And I want people to know that I have that in place so that we can sleep at night. I prefer to sleep at night. I don't want to have to be running around in the middle of the night chasing somebody through the forest and then fixing fencing the next day. I really prefer not to have it. And I was thinking about it. You see often uh, signs in people's front yards saying uh, this house is protected by such and such alarm company and then you see the signs in the windows as well the reason is that deters most small-time criminals from bothering your home that's the idea of letting them know and that's my idea I, I, if you got your home alarm system the reason is you don't want to be replacing windows and door frames just so you can catch them in the act you'd rather just let them know leave my house alone and find somebody else it's an easier target and uh, that's what we're doing here we're gonna let them know leave this alone we will get you I just don't want to I got this old beast um, electric fencer the other day and uh, it's a parent Parmac uh, multi power mark 4 I can't find any specs on it but the uh, it looks to be quite old, which is what I wanted. The older they are, 
the more powerful they are. And the modern new ones, as I show you in the videos, just don't have the power. They can hold right on to it and nothing happens at all. So this one is going to be hooked up here on the property uh, because it has a much, much higher zapping power, I am sure. And I'll be, um, later on I'll be running tests on that when I get a chance to see exactly what voltage we get out of this as compared to the other one. So that'll be interesting to run these side-by-side -side tests and see what's the difference. Now one thing I do know from looking at some videos, I did find some videos on this, it has a one pulse every second, whereas the other one is one pulse every three seconds. So imagine a deer is looking around, there's pulse, one, two, three, there's a pulse. It's ridiculously slow. I think they're overcautious on the modern devices these days. I mean, once every three seconds, that's ridiculous. This is at least once every second. I would not want the continuous running ones. Uh, one, I've heard they can cause fire. Uh, if they, the wires touch dry grass or anything, they can cause a fire. Two, if you grab it, you won't be able to let go of it. My dad was telling me some horror stories back when he was younger. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to be involved in that. So these are better. You get a nice little poke, and you jump back, and you don't want to go to it again. Now this is the one I'll be running out here in the homestead. Give a nice, hefty zap. I went and cut ten logs, dead, standing trees out of the forest. There's one over here and one over where I'm going to prepare it. I'm going to debark them here. And I'm going to see about making a split rail fence along the main road up here, or along our uh, dirt lane in front of our property. I want it to look good, so I've only cut a few. If it doesn't work, it's firewood. But these are right here in the back of, the, of our property here, real close by. So it was easy to grab and uh, experiment with. I figure I'll debark them right here, where all this mess is anyway. Some of it's still frozen to the ground. And I've got to get the chainsaw over here and finish cutting these up. So I can uh, put them over to the burn pile. See all this will go into the mulch later. As you can tell, I'm no expert at debarking a tree. This one doesn't want to come apart very easy anyway. The bigger ones are going to be easier. They're already coming apart. This one's bark is so thin it doesn't really want to let go much. I might put these on a sawhorse, save my back. I think I'm going to do that. See, that's coming off. It's just going to take some time. I don't know if I really need to, but I, I guess they'll last longer without the bark. off to make them more smooth while I'm doing it. Thank you. 
I'll do the others on the sawhorse to save my back. I don't want to cut deep because I don't got much meat there anyway, but. Actually, the top is probably going to be cut off. I uh, cut them longer than I thought I would need them, just to be sure. I want a four foot high post, enough so a person can't just step over it. And then over above that will be the electric. But up front, I just want it to really look good, so we'll see. So I've got some work to do, taking the bark off. I'm going to do two of them, and we'll take it up, and then uh, we'll get an idea how it's going to look. I don't know. With Harbor Freight sawhorses, I might be better off on the ground. One hand's got to be on the wood anyway. That's what I'm talking about. Shaves right off in some places. Look at that. You get a good grip on that. Getting it started is the only problem. Look at that. I like when that works like that. I got some materials to make proper 2x4 sawhorses. I'm going to have to do that this summer. These are no good. I got metal framing to make sawhorses, and I definitely am going to have to do it. But look, you can peel that off right around that tree. It's actually a battle axe. I don't know the name of it anymore. I got that from uh, Bison from Buggin' In as a gift one time. And I reviewed that on my tactical channel. When I got it, you can tell I've been using it. I use it for just this type of work. That's what it's good for. I use it heavily on my wood. My lumber work. Or for camping. I take it camping. Good axe. There, look at that. That's the way to do it. I got dead standing trees, so it was easier. I wish these sawhorses were better. I could do this with two hands. Better off back on the ground. I can really get at it. Although that's convenient if you can get a grip under that. Flip it right off. Knobs. Well, I'm 
finish knocking that off. I got two more to do. I've got two posts sort of sitting together. Melanie helped me. I wired them up for now together. And then uh, I'm going to nail on a cross post and see how it looks after I get uh, a little span done. Whatever. Uh, if I don't like it, I got firewood. Those dead standing trees, and I need firewood anyway. So it's a win win. Either way, no loss here. Tell you what, I'm going to sleep a good again tonight. finish that up and get the other one ready forgot I had this I bought it last fall from an old man isn't that nicer look at that I just need better saw horses yeah I'm gonna have to do this on the ground but look that's gonna work better the saw horses are garbage I'm slowly getting the right tools for the jobs here Saw horses don't do it, but look at that. If I could get something that stood up for me, look at that. That's the right way. That's the right way. Put that on the ground. These things are garbage. I'll finish it up, but I got the right tool now. Forgot I had that, I never used it. I bought it in the fall just before snow came down. <laughs> 